I have been an ardent defender of Bethesda Fallout for years. I find most of the criticisms to be exaggerating. People always say things like it misses the spirit of Fallout, and especially shit on Fallout 3 for this reason, saying it's a departure from the previous games. Despite having never played Fallout 1 or 2 and only hearing other people say this in YouTube videos. Now, I'm probably the biggest Fallout fan on the planet, I've played all of the mainline games several times, and have an encyclopedic knowledge of Fallout lore. The fact of the matter is that Bethesda saved the Fallout franchise, which was doomed to obscurity after Interplay went out of business, and the rights were up in the air, so we got things like Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, which has new metal music. When most people think of Fallout, they think of 3D games with a bunch of retro-futuristic elements which did not exist until Bethesda took the wheel. TLDR, most of the reasons people hate Bethesda Fallout are because the internet told them to. There is one huge flaw that looms over every Bethesda Fallout project though. This is the design philosophy of the apocalypse happened yesterday. In every Bethesda Fallout game, everyone lives in shacks with holes in the roof. There's been no progress since the bombs fell, and based on the appearance of things, you would assume the Great War was 20 years ago at max, not 200. I hate this design philosophy. It's nonsensical and stupid. And to me and a lot of other people, one of the most interesting elements of post-apocalyptic fiction is seeing how new societies form, seeing how new people build on from the end of the world and the new cultures and ideas that form. No longer content with making new Fallout settings that have not made any progress since the bombs fell, they have now taken to destroying pre-established progress to make the entire world fall into this terrible and pessimistic design philosophy of the bombs fell yesterday. Which brings us to the new king of Shady Sands and the apparent dissolution of the NCR. Now, the dissolution of the NCR is speculation, and I have been huffing copium that it still exists, but most evidence in the show points to it no longer existing. Before I talk about the terrible writing of the first point, and the pure logistical and geographical impossibility of the second point, I first need to explain the size and importance of Shady Sands and the NCR. So let's talk about Shady Sands and the NCR. First appearing in Fallout 1 as a small settlement that needs the help of the Vault Dweller, Shady Sands grows exponentially in the 80 years between Fallout 1 and 2. By the time the Chosen One rolls around, it is no longer a quaint little town, but instead a city that appears to be at about pre-war living standards, maybe a lagging a little bit far behind, but it is a fully functioning city with things like running water and hospitals. It is the capital of the New California Republic, a relatively new country that includes other major cities like the Hub, Junktown, Los Angeles Boneyard, and the remnants of San Diego, now called Dayglo. All of these settlements minus Dayglo appear in Fallout 1. Given the major glow up Sandy Sands had in between Fallout 1 and 2, we can assume that these cities are at a similar quality of life, probably each having running water and hospitals and being about pre-war living standards, maybe not pre-war America, but definitely pre-war somewhere in the world. In the 38 years between 2 and New Vegas, the NCR expands greatly again, incorporating places like Volt City, which at the time of Fallout 2 has even better living standards than Shady Sands. So we can only assume that Shady Sands and the rest of the NCR cities have improved to be as good as Volt City. The point of this fictional history legend is A. The NCR is big as fuck and incorporates nearly all of California and at the time of New Vegas is moving into Nevada. And B. The NCR has made significant progress in rebuilding humanity and has reached pre-war standards of life in many of their cities. Which brings us to the nuking of Shady Sands. The nuking of Shady Sands is a symbolic meta gesture as much as it is a narrative choice. In the TV show they obviously didn't want to be saddled with, there being a fully functioning government, but still wanted to be set in California. Instead of just making it a prequel so they could have their cake and eat it too, they decided to shit on the very concept of society rebuilding and Fallout by destroying the most prominent example, the New California Republic. It's not enough for the new Fallout games to follow the apocalypse happened yesterday formula. Any evidence of the contrary in the world of Fallout must be destroyed. Now, let's talk about a Bethesda is stupid and 
thinks that countries work like Mordor in the Lord of the Rings, or where you destroy Sauron or in this case Shady Sands, a giant pit opens up that absorbs the whole thing and all the citizens of the country fall into that pit. Before we talk about that, let's talk about geography or how Shady Sands teleported. Lucy comes from Vault 33, which is in Santa Monica right next to the pier. This is either right next to or part of the LA Boneyard, another major city in the NCR. So let's look at a map. This is where the LA Boneyard is, and this is Shady Sands. Based on real life locations on the map, they are at least a few hundred miles away. So upon leaving the vault, Lucy would have been in the heart of one of the NCR cities, the LA Boneyard, and to even get to the Shady Sands crater, Lucy and Maximus would have to pass through the hub, which at the time the show is set, is the most prosperous city in the entire Fallout universe we have heard of, and the center of the NCR economy. Also, it is probably the capital of the NCR since the sign for Shady Sands says the first capital of the NCR, which you wouldn't put unless there was a new capital of the NCR. The show places Shady Sands inside the LA Boneyard, and it seems like a few blocks admits a still ruined city rather than a completely new city like in the games. But whatever, Shady Sands has been moved to the LA Boneyard, it's a retcon. There are still tens of thousands of people in major cities within the vicinity of Shady Sands, even if it is in the LA Boneyard. Moldave are living in a ruined Griffith Observatory, which is a sign that says NCR Headquarters makes no fucking sense. Now I am hoping and praying to the old gods and the new that she is just a small small splinter cell of the NCR, or at the very least, the other cities that are were a part of the NCR are still around, and possibly are splintered into small city-states. But based on the information presented in the show, Shady Sands being nuked, like I said, was like Sauron being destroyed, all of its citizens and cities got absorbed into a hole, and this reverted everyone in California to living in shacks with pre-war skeletons still inside of them. Bonus round, the other dumb reveal. Now there's another incredibly dumb reveal in the show. vault Tech started the Great War, or at least they had a meeting where they suggested doing that because we don't technically have confirmation. This is a stupid plot point that has been trying to worm its way into canon for literal decades. Right after the release of Fallout 1, before 2 had even come out, there was a script written for a potential Fallout movie. This movie never got past this script, but in this script it was revealed that vault started the Great War. If I recall correctly, this plot point was also originally intended to be a reveal in Fallout 2 as well, and I believe in one of the Fallout by Bibles. Chris Avalon says that Voltex started a war. So this reveal that Voltex started a war was supposed to be in Fallout 2, along with the Volt is the Enclave and the Volts are really experienced reveal, which is already super dumb. I, I hate Voltex being involved with the Enclave and I hate the Volts being experiments, but that's a topic for another day. I hate the Voltex nuke reveal in the show and for some it might be worse than the Shady Sands reveal, but because this was a popular theory and was treated as semi-canon by the Fallout wiki, the idea was already in my mind, so even though though it's dumb, it upsets me less because I was already primed for this to happen. Now this is pure speculation, but something I am worried about is the potential character assassination of Mr. House in the next season. Mr. House is present in the scene where vault -Tec is discussing nuking the world. I love Mr. House. I nearly always kill him because I am an NCR dick rider, but he might be my favorite character in the Fallout series. House is a terrible person though. He has no value for human life if they are not useful to him and allows horrific things to happen under his watch as long as they don't get in the way of business. He is essentially capitalism personified, but one thing House would never do because it's extremely fucking stupid and bad for business is blow up the entire planet. Now this is pure speculation, but because he's present at the meeting where vault -Tec is discussing blowing up the world, and at the end we see Hank going to New Vegas, I'm worried House will turn out to be a vault -Tec and or the Enclave Stooge who went along with the plan that will destroy his beloved Las Vegas and also kill 99% of his prospective customers. Regardless, I am dreading the appearance of New Vegas in Season 2 because I am deeply afraid that they will ruin it, having it be destroyed for whatever reason because civilization cannot exist in Bethesda Fallout. Also, I did not hate the Fallout TV show. A lot of it was great, 
but these two reveals poison the well for me along with a bunch of little things that add up that make me think less of the whole show and almost entirely ruin the whole thing for me anyway i'm probably gonna make more fallout videos because i have an autistic obsession with fallout and encyclopedic knowledge of the series so if this video does well i'll make some other fallout videos i'll talk about whatever you guys request in the comments if you have any lore questions i know it so you know leave a comment so if you like this video and want to see me whine more about things i love being ruined check out my video on the ending of mass effect 3 otherwise like and subscribe or whatever bye bye